welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we've got another Tony Topaz tutorial. This time it's the full makeup, hair, and outfit. So if you haven't seen my series of hairstyles inspired by Tony, then you should definitely check it out. I will have it linked in the information button as well as in the description bar. And it's a bunch of really fun braided hairstyles as well as how I get my hair to this kind of rose gold pinky shade using temporary hairsprays. Super fun to try out, but today it's more based on the makeup look. So I had a lot of fun playing with purples, used a really cool palette that I hope you guys enjoy seeing. So anyways, thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification button if you don't want to miss any of my videos. And crazy enough, Vanessa Morgan actually liked and commented on my photo of me as cheerleader Tony today. So that was pretty exciting. And anyways, let's just get started with today's look. I have already applied my foundation. I've used one of my favorites, the NARS Natural Longwear Foundation in the shade Patag Patagonia, hopefully I said that right. And I don't see a highlight and contoured look, just a natural looking foundation base. So to add in a bit more of a dewy natural texture, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter on the high points of my face. You could also sheer out your foundation with an illuminator or moisturizer mixed in for a similar look. And setting this with Bare Minerals Bare Pro Pressed Powder, I like this one quite a bit and I am tapping to set especially underneath the eyes and I'm using this to prep the lids. Of course my most used contour palette, the Urban Decay Naked Skin Shape Shifter Palette. I'm using the Ash Brown for some dimension to the look, taking this under the cheekbones, under the jaw, as well as along the forehead. Not a strong contour, I also have brought in a bit of the bronzer in this palette to warm up the complexion and I'm bringing the contour shade between the eyes and contouring the nose so the face doesn't appear flat. So down the sides of the nose and then accenting the tip. Warming up the cheeks with Sugar Bomb by Benefit. I love Benefit boxed powders and I haven't used this one all that often, but it's a really pretty deeper peachy rose. And one more blush because I can't seem to just use one. A pop of pink higher up on the cheek. This looks really nice against the Tony Topaz inspired hair. You can skip a liquid highlight and go with the dewy look we already have going. I use the L'Oreal Lumi Drops. I loved the whole L'Oreal Lumi line, but this highlight is actually my least favorite out of the collection. It looks nice on camera, but it's a little bit silvery based and I prefer the pearly pink or a golden highlight. So I actually like the L'Oreal Liquid Illuminator in the shade Pink Ice better on me, which is an earlier product they released. But anyways, <laughs> moving on to brows, I'm using the Revlon Colorstay Brow Pencil to create a rounded arched brow. I toned down my own shape, but I kept them quite a bit deeper than normal. Tony's brows are very dark brown, almost black, but my roots are not quite as dark, so I went with a bit more of a medium dark shade. Next up, the coolest palette ever. This is the MAC and Jeremy Scott collab. The makeup all looks like old school radio players, discs, and tapes. Super cool, and be sure to head over to my Instagram because I do have a giveaway with the MAC and Jeremy Scott collection. Now using the purples in this palette or any matte light purple you have, apply all over the lid and then with a slightly deeper purple, blend the shadow through the inner and outer lid. For the crease, let's bring in a bit of a purpley maroon. I've mixed some of the reddish shadow with the deeper maroon slash purple shade. Hopefully I'm doing all right with the color descriptions here. The shades are up on screen if you want to try to match them with shadows you already have. And while the shadows are rounded through the crease, taper the shadow into a V and we are going to apply some liner that extends past the lash line. Pop on a brightening highlight that has a bit of sheen to it. And with the mix of red and purple we used in the crease, apply under the lash line lightly. I find no look really looks finished without a bit of shadow blended underneath the lash line. So that's just a tip I have, even if it's something really simple, a bit of a um, like medium tone brown always looks nice. And now a liner that I love. I never go with this kind of applicator, but I was so pleasantly surprised with how easily this felt tip glided over the lash line. So I did add this to my giveaway as well. Build the liner thicker into a point slightly upturned, but we do want this line extending past the lash line outwards to taper out the eye more than it is upturned, if you know what I'm saying. And once the liner is down, I like to then go in and start to deepen up the outer corner with a matte uh, gray brown. Also use this shadow to smoke out the lash line slightly. Mm -hmm. 
And finishing step for this purpley eye is a pop of shimmer. I'm using one of my favorite pigments ever, MAC Kitchmas, all over the lid. This has definitely appeared in a couple of my tutorials now. And then some pencil liner to the inner tear duct and tight line. Also go underneath some of the bottom lashes to make them pop. And now for falsies. These are a pair from Kiss Lashes. Kiss Lashes are the best. These ones really fill out the lash line and extend outwards to match the liner. Bit of Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. I thought this was appropriate packaging for Tony. And apply to the bottom lashes. And then I'm using a tiny bit to blend in my top lashes with the falsies. This makes the falsies harder to use. So you can always apply mascara first or not at all. But I, I don't know, I mess up putting on lashes when I apply mascara first. So that's why I do it this way. And lips for Tony start with a dusty rose lip liner. I love this one by L'Oreal. It glides on so easily and I'm overlining my top lip here for more of an evened out pout because my top lip is quite a bit smaller. And for Tony's lip, she usually wears a gloss and there's more of a pink in the center. So I'm mixing a couple glosses here. First up, we have the Buxom Vava Plump Shiny Liquid Lipstick in the shade Get Lucky for a bright pop of cotton candy pink. And let's tone it down with a brown based rose. This is Bare Minerals Gen Nude Buttercream Lip Gloss in the shade Tantalize. I love these glosses. And if you love rose and nude gloss shades, then you should for sure check this line out. Here's a look at all the shades. Blending together here. And I think this lip look is pretty accurate to Tony, but if you want just one product where you don't have to layer, I'd look for a rosy nude shade from the Bare Minerals line. Moving on to hair, of course I did recently do a series of Tony hairstyles. Thanks again for all the love on that video, it meant so much to me. And we have another really cute hairstyle today with a bandana. You can find these at Ardeen's. I actually found a ton vintage shopping and I wish I picked one up because they were much more worn in looking. But just roll it up and tie behind the head. And this looks best when you iron the scarf flatter, so I should have done that, but just keep it fairly tight. And then let the hair lay over the bandana. And I got these really nice curls with my box Foxy Bay set, sorry, the 25 by 25 millimeter wand. And to finish off the look, we are going to add some rope braiding detailing. To rope braid, take a section of hair and divide in two. Twist the two sides going the same direction. So here I'm twisting both of mine away from my face. And once you get the twist going, wrap the strands around each other towards your face. This will keep the rope braid in its shape and then tie off with a small elastic. I added some rose gold spray to the twist so it would pop more in the hair. And I've repeated the rope braid again in the underlay of my hair. Is that a word, underlay? I think so. And another one on top. Tony's bandana again looked more worn in, so I just took some eyeshadow and faded out the brighter white on there with a bit of gray. And I added a plaid top with lots of layered necklaces, but stay tuned for my final Tony Topaz inspired outfit I put together from one of her most iconic looks with braided pigtails. Here I am in an awesome retro cafe called Bean and Baker Malt Shop. It has amazing milkshakes. Definitely check it out if you're in Toronto. And to get this Tony look, you want a distressed top, a bunch of layered necklaces, and then some faded jeans, and some awesome lace-up boots. I will have a link down below to my Dote profile. If you're American, you should definitely have the app and follow me because I do character recreations on there as well, and you can easily shop the look. But you, of course, want a leather jacket and a plaid shirt to wrap around your waist. She wears that a lot and we can't forget the beanie. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this Tony Topaz inspired look and if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more beauty tutorials. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification button and if I've missed any of the Riverdale characters that you want to see, let me know in the comments below. I haven't done Betty yet, so if you want to see a Betty, I can definitely do that. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in my next one. Mm.